Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Everything in it is one way or the other. There's no middle ground. Narrow alleys. Broad highways. Mansions on the hill. Shacks in the gullies. People who work for a living and people who steal. These are the ones that cause me trouble. I'm a cop. It was Monday, April 17th. We were working the day watch out of forgery detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Welch. My name's Friday. We'd gotten reports of an expert check forger operating again in the city. She'd written more than $20,000 in bad checks. We had to stop her. Morning, Joe. Hi, how'd the weekend go? Oh, pretty slow. Stayed home, did some gardening. How about that new lawn you put in? How's it doing? Well, there's only one solution. If we want a garden, we're gonna have to move. Well, why? What's the matter now? Same old thing. Gophers? Happens every year. I don't know why I try anymore. It's just a waste of good grass seed. Joe, Frank? Yeah, Ferguson. Cat wants to see us. Okay. What's up, Fergie? You ain't gonna like it. What's that? Skipper will brief us. Morning, Skipper. Hi. You took finish up with the Meyer case yesterday, is that right? Yeah, it's all washed up. We're clear. Good. Then you can start on this one right away. You work with Besser and Ferguson here. Well, what is it, Cam? The Grandma case. I had a hunch, Joe. What have we done to deserve this? There's nothing any of us have done. It's what we haven't done. I want her stopped once and for all. We any closer to her than we have been, Fergie? Just about the same, Joe. That's the reason I'm putting two more of you on it. How well do you know this case? Well, just what we've heard around the office. Frank? Same here. I could stand some briefing. Ferguson? Connick, you must have heard how she operates three months out of the year, April, October, and December. That's all. She's never been known to change the schedule? Not as far as I know. She's been doing it the same for nine years. All the phony checks she cashes are personal checks? That's right. She never writes them less than two dollars, never more than a hundred. <laughs> nine years. She's been going that long? Nine and a half. It'll be an even ten this October. You want to check them out on the totals, Ferguson? Yeah, up to and including the first of the month, she's cashed 1,273 checks. The total is a little over $22,000. Anything special about the way she writes the checks? Nothing but the signatures. There's an alias list on her, but it'll knock your eye out. More than 200 different names. Her description's still the same. About 50 years old, kind of plump, nice face. A few minor changes. Last year, she had gray hair, dressed very plain. This year, she dyed her hair black, dresses a little more expensively. Nine years, that's a long streak of luck for any paper hanger. That's just it. This old gal's not just an ordinary paper hanger. She's no amateur, now don't get me wrong. But she doesn't operate like any check forger I've ever known. She contradicts part of her ammo, part of it she doesn't. She takes chances an ordinary paper hanger would never take, and she gets away with them. Take a look at just one of these exhibits. Twenty-eight checks pass on the same chain of grocery store, same company. Pass them all in one month? Nope, that's just the point. Two years ago, she passed 14 of them, spread them out over a period of a month. Last year, she passed another batch of 14, all within three days. One year, she used a different name on each check. On this batch, she used the same name. Well, does she have identification when she passes these checks? Always. Phony driver's license, social security card, the works. Then she's got that sweet grandmother smile of hers. Clerks rarely turn her down when she shows up at the check. You can get used to various descriptions on her, too. Give the file a look. Hardly three of the check victims can get together on what she looks like exactly. Well, where are they getting stung the most? Downtown or out in the neighborhoods? The neighborhoods. Anywhere from the beach area to the valley. Well, that whole file, Skipper, that's not just her work, is it? Every last bit of it. We can't fit it in a six-foot shelf. In nine years, I've had five teams of men work this thing. None of them reached her. You and Friday make the six. Yeah, well, it's April 17th. How's she doing so far this month, Furry? Okay, $602 in checks we know of since the first of the month. Same general description, same general M.O. No fresh leads? She's been operating nine years, Joe. Yeah. She's just as good as ever. To the working detective, there's no tougher job than tracking a lawbreaker who's half professional and half amateur. You can expect a criminal who's entirely professional to react generally the same in a given set of circumstances. The same with the amateur. But take the two, the professional and the amateur, and intermingle their possible and probable reactions. You'll likely have a sound reason why and how an elderly woman could victimize merchants with $20,000 in bad checks over a period of nine years without being caught. 
Grandma, as she'd come to be known, worked only three months out of each year, April, October, and December. Her apparent fine sense of timing and her knowledge of psychology was far and away superior to that of the ordinary paper hanger. If the file on Grandma was any indication, she apparently had been born to be a successful check forger. After Frank and I spent three days on the case with Sergeants Ferguson and Besser, we were almost convinced there was only one way we could reach the suspect. She had to make a mistake. Fergie, how'd you do? Pretty sour. Four checks in two days. What'd you get? Two. Don Myers checked the signatures. They're all hers. Here's our list if you're interested. Meat market out on Pico, $25. Grocery in West Hollywood, $48. Two department stores downtown, $100 bucks a piece. How they describe the woman? Same old yarn. She was a nice, charming little lady, about 55 or 60. Small, dark hair, graying, dark eyes, nice smile. Clerk told me she reminded him of his mother. Yeah. For one thing, sure, her timing's just as good as it was nine years ago. The Downtown Merchants Association's screaming again. They're looking for action. Well, fine. So are we. When they stop cashing checks for people they don't know, they'll stop getting hurt. We can't stand behind their counters and run a make on every one of their customers who wants to cash a check. How many publicity campaigns have we run on bad checks? I don't know, but they don't seem to stop Grandma. Uh, you talked to Captain today? Yeah, he's looking for action, too. I don't know what we can do unless we get some kind of cooperation from the merchants. Every time the old gal pushes a bum check, it's three or four days before it gets to the bank and we hear about it. The trail's pretty cold by then. Joe and I were talking just before you came in, Fergie. We can't expect too much to happen the way we're going. Any ideas? Well, more men and more stakeouts. The captain says he'll buy that. That's about all we can do. Yeah. Another ten days and April will be over. Grandma will be through pushing checks until October again. I don't know, Joe. Our formula's too perfect for me. There's got to be a flaw in it someplace. Yeah, sure. All we got to do is find it. You got out a bulletin on that revised description of her, Fergie? They're all taken care of. Special notices were mailed out to the merchants. <laughs> I'll get it. Forgery, Smith. Yes, sir. Oh? Yes, sir, we'll be right out, thanks. Anything? Yeah, a supermarket on North Temple just got hit with two checks. Yeah. Clerk says the woman reminded him of his mother. A week passed. The number of stakeouts on business places throughout the city was doubled. The M.O. and the description of the suspect was circulated among the merchants in the downtown and suburban shopping centers. Clerks were especially warned to be on the lookout for. The precautions went for nothing. Grandma's checks kept showing up at the rate of two and three a day. On April 27th, she passed a check for $50 at a delicatessen on Hollywood Boulevard. We drove out to interview the owner, a Mr. Hammerston. She's the nicest old lady I think I ever met, Sergeant. Sure surprised me. Say, you wouldn't care for a piece of liverwurst, would you? It's a new brand. Don't know whether my customer's gonna like it or not. No, thank you. Had you ever seen the woman before, Mr. Hammers? Oh, I guess she'd been coming in here for at least a week or two. Said she was new in the neighborhood. We used to get Gavin all the time. Mm-hmm. Did she do much shopping here, sir? Mm-hmm, quite a bit, yeah. Always paid in cash. We got to be great friends, you know. Used to talk about the old country, things like that. Well, she, uh, said she came from the same town in Finland my folks did. I guess she was just buttering me up, huh? Well, that's the way it sounds, yes, sir. Had you ever refused to cash a check for her? Mm, no. She never tried to pass one, just this once, and I did it. Do you have one of those circulars that we sent out on this woman? Well, I'm ashamed to say it, Sergeant, but I have. Hanging right back there in the storeroom. Thing is, I never connected the two, the woman and notice. The way she looks at you, you know? Like you'd be a heel even to question her. How was she dressed the last time she was in? Do you remember that? No. Yeah. Had on a black coat. Oh, I told you that. Very plain-looking clothes, like any other housewife print dress, some kind of scarf around her neck. That's about all I noticed. How about that description of her in the bulletin we sent you? That fit her pretty well? No, I guess so. Didn't seem exactly plump to me, though. Kind of a nice figure for a woman her age. Well, do you know if any of your customers were acquainted with her? No, I wouldn't know that. She acted as though she knew some of them, but, well, now that this has happened, I can see she was just putting on. Well, she was a great disappointment to me. Well, she is to a lot of people, sir. I used to judge with her all the time. Is that so? Yeah. Seemed like a real good sport. Fine personality. Joshing all the time. Just as homey as you please. Mm -hmm. Fits in with the other descriptions. Say, how are you ever going to catch somebody like that? Well, we're not sure we will, sir. Yeah? They're going to like this. Two days later, on April 30th, right on schedule, the flow of bogus checks in Grandma's handwriting suddenly stopped. If she continued to work by the same timetable she'd been using for the last nine years, she wouldn't start operations again until the 1st of October. During the next five months that followed, from May to the end of September, Besser, Ferguson, Frank, and I handled the usual run of check cases. 
At the same time, we used up every spare hour we had making preparations for Grandma's next appearance. Every businessman throughout the city who might be a possible victim was alerted. A revised description of the suspect together with her M.O. was printed up and given wide distribution. Every possible precaution was taken. October came. Grandma started on the 10th year of her forgery career without a hitch. On October 1st, she cashed a check for $75 at a large downtown woman's shop. As soon as we got the report, we drove out to the store and went to the department where the check had been received. A fashion show was in progress. We asked to see the manager. Montrose, this is my partner Frank Smith. My name's Friday. We're from Forgery Detail. Oh, yes, about that check. Is that right? Yes, sir. We're having one of our often fashion showings this afternoon. It usually keeps us pretty busy. Yes, sir. Are you the one who authorized this check to be cashed? Yes, I okay all the checks that we cash in this department. And you okayed this one? These are your initials? Yes, that's right. I don't know what I can do for you, gentlemen. The check was passed. for unfortunate occurrence. The sales girl handled the transaction. She showed me the check. I knew the signature, so I okayed it. Mary Walker? Yes, that's how the check was signed. What kind of identification did the woman have? Uh, her charge account plate. You know, the small metal card? Charger plates, we call them. I recognized that and the signature immediately. You know this Mary Walker pretty well, do you? She's one of our best customers. October 4th, 2 p.m. Before we left the store, we found that another worthless check bearing the signature Mary Walker had been cashed in a different department of the store on the same day as the other forged check. The woman had used the same means of identification, a metal charge account plate stamped with the name Mary Walker. We took the two checks back to the office and had Don Meyer in handwriting compare the signatures. There wasn't any doubt in his mind, the writing on both checks was Grandma's. It was only a hunch, but it was beginning to look as though the suspect had finally done what we'd been waiting nine years for to do. She'd made a mistake. Frank and I drove out to an address in the Wilshire district to interview Mrs. Mary Walker. She fit the general description of the suspect, but she denied writing either one of the checks which bore her signature. Well, it's out of the question, Sergeant. I couldn't have written those checks. I haven't even been in the city for the past five days. And these signatures on these checks, Mrs. Walker, they're not yours. Well, it looks like my handwriting, but it's not. I didn't write those checks. They're forgeries. Well, you do have a charge account at the store, don't you, ma'am? Yes, I've had one there for years. Nothing like this ever happened, though. Do you have one of those charge account plates, do you? Well, yes, I did have one. You lent it to someone in your family? No. As a matter of fact, I lost it. I intended to report it to the store, but it slipped my mind. Do you have any idea where and when you might have lost it? Well, I think it was last Sunday night, Sergeant, but I'm not sure. Well, just a minute. I know someone who would remember. My name is Lambert. She was there, and I'm sure that she'd remember. Mm -hmm. Who's she, ma'am? She's a girlfriend of mine. She lives in this neighborhood. Hello, Inez. This is Mary Walker. Oh, I'm just fine. You? Good. Say, Inez, what night was it that we went to the Boosters Club meeting? Sunday? Well, that's what I thought. Oh, nothing. Just some silly misunderstanding. Well, all right, Inez. Uh, thanks for remembering for me. Yeah. Bye. It was Sunday night, Sergeant. Inez Lambert and I went to the neighborhood Boosters Club meeting. And I'm sure that that's where I must have lost it. Well, and you think the charge account plate just fell out of your purse, is that it? Either that, or it was taken. Why do you say that, ma'am? Well, it's a very serious thing, and I didn't want to mention it. What's that? Well, I left my purse on the chair next to me part of the evening. And when I got home, I thought I was missing a $5 bill out of my change purse. I didn't notice then that the charger plate was gone. Do you remember who was at that meeting, Mrs. Walker? Oh, 40 or 50 people at least. How many women, would you say? Oh, a dozen, I suppose. Now, I'm not accusing anyone of robbery, Sergeant. 
I know that that's a very serious charge to make. Do you know if one of the club officers might have taken a list of those present? Oh, they don't have to. We do the same thing at every meeting. What's that, ma'am? Well, I'll sign the attendance book when we leave. <laughs> At 3 p.m., Frank and I contacted the secretary of the Neighborhood Boosters Club. He gave us a list of those present at the Sunday night meeting of the club. As Mary Walker had told us, each person present had signed his or her name and address in the attendance book. We took the record downtown with us and had Don Meyer compare each signature on the list with samples of Grandma's handwriting. Number 32 in the list, fellas. That's it. Positive make, Don? No, don't mind mine. That's Grandma's handwriting. Let me see how she signed it. Mm -hmm. The design is Lambert. We went down the hall to r and I and had them check the name Inez Lambert through the files. She had no criminal record. Together with Bester and Ferguson, Frank and I spent the next day and a half trailing Inez Lambert wherever she went. She fitted the description of the suspect perfectly. We questioned her friends, her neighbors. We dug back into every corner of her life for the past 10 years. The results were pretty amazing. We found that she was highly respected by everyone she knew. She was active in a dozen civic and church organizations. Her reputation was spotless. There was only one hitch. Mrs. Lambert's hobby was charities. By checking back, we found that during the past 10 years, she donated an average of $3,000 annually to various charitable organizations. Her husband's total annual income was $7,000. From her bank, we obtained specimens of Inez Lambert's handwriting. It matched almost perfectly with every signature in the grandma file. Monday, October 7th, Frank and I called on Mrs. Lambert. She asked us back to the kitchen. You know, Mary Walker was telling me about you. <laughs> she told me about missing those things from her purse at the meeting. Is that what you want to inquire about? Well, yes, ma'am. We want to ask you some other questions besides that. <laughs> well, you sort of caught me at a bad time. I was just getting ready to put some baking in the oven for dinner tonight. Would you mind very much if we talked while I worked? <laughs> I've got to get this done. No, not at all, ma'am. You go right ahead. Oh, there goes that cream sauce starting over again. <laughs> Officers, just take chairs there, would you please? I'll be right with you in just a minute. Thank you, ma'am. You know, this cream sauce is so temperamental, I can't take my eye off of it for a minute. Yes, ma'am. Either of you officers like a nice cup of hot cocoa? It's kind of chilly out today. Well, no, ma'am. We only have a few questions for you. It won't take very long. Yes, I see. Well, I'll just get my eggs beaten up here then. Uh, the crowd here, would you mind holding that sure. for me for just half a minute? But just anyway, that's fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> These eggs beaten, you know, they make meringue. You can't make meringue very well without plenty of eggs. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> What's this going to be? Oh, this is going to be a pinch pie. Did you ever hear of a pinch pie? Uh -huh. It's a, oh, you know, it's a sort of a meringue tart. Uh, I'll just beat these up nice and fluffy. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, I'll take it, please. Sergeant, would you mind handing me that cup of sugar right back up here or some sugar and I'll put it right in the yes, cup here. Yes, ma'am, there's a cup please. here. Do you this is a whole pack. No, I'll leave the one. It's all right. Thank you very much. Yes, just pour a little. That's enough. Thanks very That's much. Right. Let's make it rather nice. Just, there we are. Beat these all up nice and fluffy. Now, what was it you wanted to know? Well, Mrs. Walker had her charge account plate stolen that night at the Boosters Club meeting. Someone's been using it to cash bad checks in her name. Is that so? Well, Mary didn't tell me that. The same person who's using that charge plate has been cashing bad checks all over the city. Been doing it for some time now. Oh, my. Well, I don't think I can help you, Sergeant. I went to that meeting with Mary. She says somebody must have been in her purse, but I didn't see them. Do you have that charge account plate, Mrs. Lambert? <laughs> me? Oh, no. I have my own. Now, let me see. A teaspoonful of vanilla, a teaspoonful of vinegar, a teaspoonful of water, combined in a small pitcher or cup. We've got good reason to believe you have that charge account plate, ma'am. Did you take it from Mrs. Walker? That's a silly thing for you to say, officer. I told you I have my own charge of plate. I never borrow anyone else's. No reason to. Add a few drops of combined liquids and beat constantly. Did you cash two checks last week and sign them with Mrs. Walker's name? Why, of course not. Why should I do such a thing? Mary Walker's one of my best friends. I would do that to her even as a joke. Our handwriting man compared the signatures on those two checks, Mrs. Lambert. Both of them match your handwriting. <laughs> well, then your handwriting man certainly made a mistake. <laughs> oh, uh, there's a large Pyrex dish in that cupboard right there. Would you mind getting it from me? I'll get it. Oh, on the top shelf, way up. That's right. On the left. No, not those. A big one. See that? This one? Oh, that's right. That's Pyrex. Don't, don't drop those on your head. My nice dishes. I don't want to break them. That's fine. Good. <laughs> Thank you. 
you deny you wrote those two Ford's checks last week? You deny you've written and cashed about 1,500 worthless checks in the last nine years? Why, of course I deny it. You sure you haven't made a mistake? We're sure, ma'am. Sorry, you'll have to come downtown with us for questioning. What's that? Oh, my cream sauce is boiling over again, Sergeant. Oh, I can't leave the house now, right in the middle of getting dinner ready. My husband would be furious. If you want to talk, couldn't we do it later on? Sorry, afraid not. But you certainly can't accuse me of doing anything wrong. Folks at church will vouch for me. We've got just as many people who say you cheated them. The same people who cashed those checks for you. Quite a few of them, ma'am. Nine years worth. But that's silly. Nine years and cashing checks. I'm sure you must mean somebody else, Sergeant. Well, I've got to get this platter greased now. Let me see. Heat meringue upon lightly greased platter. Yes, that's right. We don't mean anyone else, ma'am. You'll have to come along with us, Mrs. Lambert. But you can't prove a thing. You can't prove anything about me. We've got a record downtown on every single check you passed since you started. We've got specimens of your handwriting and people to identify you. We know what your income is. We know how much you've given to charities. My donations to charity are my business. You've no right to upset me like this. How many average families give half their income to charity? Can you answer that for us, Ms. Lambert? But that's my business. It's none of yours. I certainly have a right to give what I please. The money's got to come from someplace, ma'am. Is that what the checks were for? All right, we're going to lay it out for you, ma'am. We have all the evidence against you that we need. Witnesses, too. We don't know why you've been cashing these checks, but we do know that you have been. Now, I think it'll work out better for everybody concerned if you tell us the truth. I do hope I put enough vanilla in there. Would you like to tell us about it? I never thought about anyone finding out, I guess. I guess I should have expected it, shouldn't I? Yes, ma'am. It'll be terrible, I know. He'll never understand. Who's that? Albert, my husband. He'll never understand. Would either of you like a cup of coffee? No, thank you, ma'am. The money wasn't for me, you know. Not one dollar of it. I can prove that for you. Yes, ma'am. It was all for charity. There were so many of them. Orphanages and old people's homes and the Christmas poor fund. And then the overseas relief charities. Well, they all needed money. Somebody has to take care of them. Your husband didn't know anything about this for 10 years, ma'am. <laughs> Nothing at all. They were my charities. I had to have money for them. I took the money from people who had it and gave it to those who didn't. What do you think, Sergeant? What's that? Was I wrong? Do you think the good Lord will say I was wrong? Well, I wouldn't know, ma'am. I only wanted to help the poor. He did. He came to help the poor. Well, there's a big difference, ma'am. Yes? He didn't use a checkbook. December 17th, trial was held in Department 81, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect entered a plea of guilty to two counts of forgery, and the remaining charges were set off the calendar. She received the sentence as prescribed by law. Forgery is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for not less than one, nor more than 14 years. <laughs> 